Server meshing is here and it was spectacular and it worked and it didn't work. All sorts of amazing things. You've likely seen lots of clips, things like that, of people transitioning between servers. We're gonna get into a little bit of that, but the I think the most important thing and the most exciting thing was looking at the configurations of servers that CIG tested. First of all, this is our example of our current stand to the system. All of this is controlled by one dedicated game server. But at the start of this test, we had a couple of different configurations. First of all, we had shards with two dedicated game servers on. So you see on this diagram, you've got the blue server and the yellow server. These had a limit of 200 players and in practice, they looked a bit like this. So the blue is one server. So that's basically space, all the stations, all that sort of stuff. And then also we've got the yellow, which is representing the other server, which was, as far as I can tell, the planets and the moon. So these servers ran relatively well. They were not spectacular in terms of server FPS, but everything worked effectively. I mean, not everything. As we'll go on to see, lots of things didn't work about this test, but that's fine. But this setup, this configuration for a shard was fairly stable compared to what we're gonna see in a minute. But also when the test went live, we had this shard configuration. Four servers represented again by the different colors, all doing slightly different things. Now, this play test had 400 people in the shard as the, as the limit. And initially this worked pretty well. So as you'll see, again, the blue server has got all of space. The yellow server has got two planets under its control. And then if you look a bit closer, you've got these red things. One server seemed to be controlling all the moons. Another server was in charge of Hurston and Artcorp. Now, this shard in, in the testing I managed to do was even more successful in terms of the server FPS was generally higher. Obviously more servers spread across the system. It tended to, to work better. So this is what we had for the first, I guess, 24 hours of the test. But then we got into the section where CIG wanted to do some slightly more adventurous testing. We had this shard configuration six servers, an 800 player limit. And this again looked a bit like this, as far as we can tell, because it was quite hard to tell anything because this didn't really go that well in terms of playability. It probably went really well from a testing point of view, but from a, if you were logging in to this server, it was not a great time. You'll see we've got, again, blue server doing all the space stuff. We've got, I think it was individual servers per planet. And then again, the moons on their own separate server. It might not have been exactly this. It was quite hard to tell. And so I didn't, didn't exactly specify what was in control. You had to kind of go into the game and work it out. But there was a huge issue with this in terms of people logging into the game, loading into the game. And the number was very high. It actually got close to the 800 mark. But as a game experience, it was completely unplayable. But again, hopefully quite a good test. We got this message from Benoit. They were gonna dial it back a bit because it was pretty, uh, that again, didn't really work. The 800 player test was not functional really at all. So we then got this 060 has a new configuration. Now this wasn't as large, but this is where I managed to do a fair amount of testing. It still didn't perform particularly well, this configuration. So again, people were hammering it, loading in. I could not quantum travel. There was basically an interaction delay on everything you did. So the server, although the server FPS looks relatively good, completely broken really. So you can see I, the slow way, I managed to get to server the station, no quantum travel, but nothing was working. I arrived, I faffed around for a bit. And then at this stage, I went into this hole in this hangar. I thought, well, maybe I'll give it a go. See if I can see if it pop into existence, but no, it didn't. And you'll see that as I kind of go into, uh, I go into the hangar all craziness should break loose i should blow up but i don't party disbanded i've i have blown up in theory here but the server basically doesn't know about it now some time later a long time later i i actually did blow up so i landed on a pad i couldn't get out of my seat all sorts of problems again server fps looks good but the game is not working well i could shoot in armistice what really was going on is that once the server caught up, I was being impounded for being above that hangar. And then eventually I blew up. So you can see the amount of delay. I'll put it up on the screen, how long exactly it was a long time. Here is the best example though of what's actually going on. You see the author authority identifier changes. 
as you switch servers. Now, there is an issue where basically as you start content travel, when you change server, it drops you out of content travel and you have to start again. So I've already switched from the Orison server to the space server. If you remember those servers from the start and I'm gonna to travel to Ariel and you'll watch that as I travel, it will pull me out of content travel as you arrive at the planet and I will have again, swapped to a different server. There you go, you can see. Now, I did a bit of testing going back and forward. So you see again, I'm currently on the moon, the moon server here, and then I've swapped across to the space server. You can see, actually, that this happens because your quantum travel uh, calibration and stuff gets reset as you switch back and forth. What was also noticeable is that if you take a mission in one server and then change server, things won't work. So I've contracted, accepted, I've got, go to the Ita cave, I then cross over from the space server and to the moon server, and you'll see that I lose that mission. We got this message at the end of day one, the big test on day one, and they reduced everything back. They're saying that they've learned a ton and that's good stuff. Again, really all we're doing here is getting on the servers and giving them information. All the problems that come up, it was basically just, just hammer the servers, Hammer the, hammer the shards and uh, CRG will take this information away. Day two was uh, again another 800 player server. They'd done some configuration stuff. They tweaked some things, I think, throughout the day to get it working. But in reality, it didn't really work any differently from the first day. 800, the 800 player server was not successful from a playability point of view. It may have been successful from a learning point of view for a CRG. Lots of people just couldn't load in. And when you did load in again, I think up until about 400 people, it was kind of functional, but above that, again, like the first day, it just didn't seem to cope. I'm now on a 400 player server, I believe, and you'll see a noticeable desync still between the players. People kind of stopped, jumped forward, jitters all over the place. And again, this kind of is to be expected as we hammered this shard and these servers, these sorts of things are gonna come up and it's gonna be down to CRG to work out where the limits lie of their current software and where they need to change things and, and what are hard limits. This clip kind of sums up a lot of this testing uh, on the higher count servers. Things just died at various points and you were just stuck. It was a good test. Whether it was successful or not, that's really up to CIG. There'll be things that they wanted to get out of it and things that they were expecting to get out of it. Maybe they did that or they didn't, we, we don't know. From my point of view, it was incredible to see this transition between servers working relatively smoothly. Looking forward, obviously this is all the stuff that is heading towards 4.0 and there might be a temptation after this to think, well, maybe 4.0 is gonna come with huge player numbers, multiple servers all on a shard. And I just would like to just tell everybody to hold your horses on that because this was a, an early test and yes, CRG moving really quickly at the moment, but my expectation still for 4.0 is just to have one server on Stanton and one server on Pyro, and they will be in one shard and they'll be meshed together and you'll transfer across the line uh, of the jump point. Because we've all, we should all remember at least, 3.18, where we had this huge tech change and it caused chaos for a long time. And I think CRG really don't want to repeat that with 4.0. 4.0 is the first big naming change to Star Citizen in years, and they will not want the press of it just being a complete car crash. They want 4.0 to be a success. I'm, I'm convinced of that. And so I think it's very, very doubtful that we'll have four servers on Pyro, four servers on Santon all together, because that is so many layers more complicated than just one on, one on Pyro and one on Stanton. I could be completely wrong on that, but I would expect CIG to get basic meshing in still with 4.0 and then build on that in the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 patches afterwards. I just don't think this is the time where we should all just go crazy and be like, it's happening, it's here, we're, we're ready, because it clearly isn't ready for prime time in any way. Not that it was trying to be, but missions didn't work like we saw across server boundaries, issues with quantum travel, all sorts of problems, and as soon as they up the numbers, it fell to pieces, really. We're not quite there yet. Serve meshing has not arrived. It's coming though.